there is a galaxy-wide cosmic being demonic warfare raging today. You say, how do we know that? Well, look at chapter 12. It, and this is where we see Satan's army forming. Uh, for the war in heaven, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and moon under her feet and on her head, a garland of 12 stars. And immediately you say, I think I read that in Genesis. And you did. That's the dream that Joseph had. And being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain and gave a birth. So that's the nation of Israel uh, giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. A great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. Boy, this is one of those things that people go wild. They go, what is going on? Is this real? Dragons, you know? And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven. That's a third of the heavenly hosts. The, what this is, is this is a, a beautiful picture God's giving of events sweeping across time and human history. Uh, and he's intermingling. They're, they're, they're actually not chronological. Uh, they're just showing this panorama. The dragon, of course, is Satan, and he took third of the stars. That's the angels that, he, that rebelled with him. And the dragon stood before the woman, ready to give birth to devour her child. That's horrible. As soon as it was born, what is that? That's Satan prompting Herod to kill the, the infants uh, and destroy the, the coming Messiah. And she bore a male child. That's Jesus, who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. That's Psalm 2. Do you understand? This is We're beep bopping between Genesis and Isaiah, and now we're back to the book of Psalms because there are over 800 of these uh, woven together truths. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. Now we're in Acts 1. That's the ascension. Jesus ascending. And the woman, now we're going into the future. See, we've gone from Satan's rebellion to Joseph having a dream sharing with Jacob and his brothers to Matthew 2 and Herod and Satan prompting Herod to Acts and Jesus ascending. Now we're looking at a tribulation event. The woman fled into the wilderness where a place was prepared for her by God. How do we know it's in the future? Look at this code that they should feed her there 1,260 days during the reign the career of the Antichrist. God is protecting the Jewish people so Satan doesn't annihilate them. Remember, that's his goal. So God begins to explain seven last signs. This is the first one. There's another one in 13, 13, another one in 13, 14. We're going to bump into all these 15, 16, and 19. And he uses all these Old Testament images. Number two, I just read it. Satan is described as a dragon 13 times in Revelation. Satan wants to destroy Israel, but God explains Satan has sought to rule the earth, and that's why this dragon has the seven you know, heads and the ten horns. All these seven kingdoms and ten future kingdoms during the tribulation, and Daniel 7 talks about that. So what's the, the war about? Satan's everlasting enmity against God. In verses 4 and 5, Satan sweeps a third of the angels along with him, it parallels with Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. By the way, Satan has always tried to destroy the Messiah. Look at this. In the Old Testament, he tried to corrupt Adam's line. That's what was going on at the flood. He tried to corrupt Adam, Abraham's seed. Remember getting Hagar in there and, and not being the son of promise. Then the famine, trying to kill them all off in, in uh, the promised land. Then the destruction of all the male children by Pharaoh. That was a way to get rid of the promised line. Then... Uh, Pharaoh pursues the whole nation. He's going to drive them into the water and kill them all, you know, and keep some slaves. And then the populating of Canaan with these people that God said are so vile and so destructive to my people. And then everything that was against David's line you can read about. And then how about this? Joseph almost got too afraid to, to take Mary to legitimize this, this transfer of the family name and to make Mary to be as if she was to be stoned. And God says, don't fear, Joseph. You need to marry her. Then Herod, you know, tried to kill the babies. Then at Nazareth, what they try and do? Do you think the Nazareth people thought of that, trying to kill Jesus and throw him off the cliff? No, that was Satan, who always wants to kill and steal and destroy. Do you remember in Mark 4 and Luke 8, the two times Jesus was in the boat, and a storm came, and the boat was sinking, and it was terrifying, 
sailors who spent their whole lives on the Sea of Galilee. Why were they terrified? Because it was an unnatural storm. And then at the cross, Satan thought he won. And all that's summarized right here in Revelation 12. Well, the conflict of the ages is Satan opposing God's plan for Israel, the chosen people of promise, and God keeps his promise. And so the Antichrist rises to power. He breaks his promise to let Israel worship in the temple. He sets up what Jesus calls the abomination. And the Jews flee, like Jesus told them to in Matthew 24. And then, look at verse 7. I I love the, the way it says it in chapter 12. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he did not prevail, nor was any place found for them. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. That one verse connects it all. The serpent in the Garden of Eden, the, the one that tempted Eve and got her to sin, is the devil that tempted Jesus in the wilderness, is the dragon we see in Revelation, is Satan. So all you notice it puts it all together. The great dragon is the devil, is Satan, and he is the one. He is the accuser of our brethren that we see in Job who accuses them before God night and day. But look at verse 11. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to death. By the way, that's the great Mark Strout was talking about, faith, hope, and love. They have faith in the blood of Christ. They have hope in Christ. That's their testimony. And they they love him more than, than life itself. Wow. 